Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to look at horizontal and vertical summation when we have demand schedules, so when the information that we have is in a table. So on the screen here I've got Lisa's demand schedule and I've got Murthor's demand schedule as well, just for some arbitrary good I haven't specified what. So just to show you how to interpret the table, you can see that if the price of the good was $10, then Lisa doesn't demand anything, Murtho demands one unit. At a price of $8, Lisa demands still nothing, but Murtho demands two units, etc, etc. We can interpret the whole table in that fashion. Now the difference between vertical and horizontal summation comes down to the difference between how we treat public goods versus private goods in our economic theory. So I'm not going to discuss these types of goods in detail here, I'll leave that for another video. But just in summary, public goods have two features, they're non-rivalrous and non-excludable. In contrast, private goods are both rivalrous and excludable. And the difference between them as a result of these features is that if you have one public good, well, many people can enjoy some benefit from that one good. So for instance, one lighthouse, one park, one street light, many people can gain benefit from, from those goods. In contrast, a private good is really associated with the benefit afforded just to the consumer of that good. So for instance, if I drink a coffee or if I buy a pair of trousers, the marginal benefit associated with the consumption of those goods is really just my own. What's relevant here too is that from our demand schedules, the price here actually is going to track the marginal benefit of consumption, which is the additional benefit that the consumer gets when they consume their next marginal unit. So for instance, to say that Murtho demands three units of a good if the price was $6, that's just to say that the marginal benefit in monetary terms that Murtho gets from the consumption of the third unit is equal to six. Now the reason why I want to know about the marginal benefit of consumption here is because economists are really interested in the allocation of our scarce resources. And in particular, we want to make sure that we always produce what we call efficiently. This means that we always produce where the marginal benefit is greater than or equal to marginal costs. We never want to produce where marginal cost is greater than marginal benefit. And the sweet spot is where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. That's what we call our efficient level of production. And this completely exhausts all the levels of production where marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. When we have a private good, we're going to find the marginal benefit associated with each unit of a good in a market by constructing our market demand. And we get our market demand by considering for each price, what is the sum of the quantities that is demanded at each of those prices. So for our example here, for instance, if this was a private good, then at the price of $10, Lisa doesn't demand any of the good, Murtho demands one, so in total in the market, one is demanded. At a price of eight, Lisa demands zero, Murtho demands two, so in total in our market, two units are demanded. At a price of six, Lisa demands one unit, Murtho demands three units, and so in total in the market, four units are demanded. That's one plus three. At a price of four dollars, Lisa demands two, Murtho demands four, so in total in the market, six is demanded. At a price of two, Lisa demands three, Murtho demands five, so in total eight units are demanded. And if the good is free, so the price is zero, Lisa demands four, Murtho demands six, so in total 10 units are demanded. So that's how we find market demand when we have a private good. And our market demand will tell us about the marginal benefit for each unit consumed in the market. And this is what we call horizontal summation. We add up the quantities that are demanded at each price. The reason why we call it horizontal summation is that quantity is the variable that's on our horizontal axes when we draw our demand curves. If we have a public good though, as we said before, one single unit of a good is associated with the benefit for a lot of different people. And we need to account for this if we want to get our allocation right. And what we do is we add up the marginal benefit for each unit. And this will give us the total marginal benefit associated with each unit. And we call that our marginal social benefit. 
And we'll use this when we think about our allocation. So for our public good, the goal is to find our marginal social benefit. If we look at our table here, this first good that Murtaugh would demand if the price was $10, for instance, well, if that's a public good, so it's non-rivalrous and non-excludable, then Lisa could also enjoy that particular unit as well. In fact, we can tell from the demand schedule that Murtaugh's marginal benefit of consumption, well, that's 10, Lisa's marginal benefit of consumption is six. So in total, and I'll just use the table down here on the left to write this information out. Well, for that first unit, the marginal social benefit is 16, that's 10 plus six. And just here in our table, MB subscript L is the marginal benefit of consumption for Lisa and MB subscript M is the marginal benefit afforded to Myrtle. For the second unit, we can tell from our demand schedules that the marginal benefit afforded to Murto is eight, and for Lisa it's four, so in total the marginal social benefit is 12, so eight plus four. For the third unit, the marginal benefit for Murto is six, and the marginal benefit for Lisa is two, so in total the marginal benefit associated with the production of that third unit would be, well, eight, so six plus two. For the fourth unit, the marginal benefit is four, and for Lisa, it's zero. So in total, our marginal social benefit is four, that's four plus zero. For the fifth unit, you can see here, because Lisa doesn't demand a fifth unit, she doesn't get any marginal benefit from that unit, so it's zero for Lisa. For Murtaugh, it's two, so in total, two. Now that's the same for the sixth unit, Murtaugh gets zero marginal benefit and Lisa again just by extension gets zero so the marginal social benefit is zero. Now what we've done there is what we call vertical summation, we're thinking for every quantity what is the sum of the marginal benefits and this creates our marginal social benefit. It's called vertical summation because for each quantity we're adding up our marginal benefit which as I said before is tracked by our price variable which is on the vertical axis when we draw our demand. And just to quickly outline the significance of all this, a lot of the time public goods are very expensive to make. So for instance, street lights, roads, public parks, lighthouses, all of these sorts of things are really expensive to produce. And the idea is that if we left it up to the private market, we would likely underproduce because one single person could probably not afford the good or rather their individual marginal benefit associated with the purchase and consumption of that good wouldn't be high enough to warrant buying such an expensive thing. So to demonstrate in our example, let's just say the marginal cost of production for a, a good with eight, then setting our marginal benefit equal to marginal cost which is the outcome that we would get in perfect competition, we would produce only, well, you can see here, two units. But if the good was a public good, well, once we account for the fact that many people, or just two people in this case, enjoy one unit, we would set our marginal cost equal to our marginal social benefit, and we can see that that equality is associated with the third unit. So we should be producing three units. And really here, there's an argument for government intervention to provide public goods because our government pools the resources from many through taxes and then they're able to afford uh, essentially to build these expensive public goods that many people can enjoy, um, you know, but if we left it to the private market, we would likely underproduce. And that's it for the video. I hope it did help. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping safe and happy. The other thing was that this was a request. So thanks so much to that um, subscriber from requesting. And sorry if it's a bit late. Um, hope you guys are doing well.